Buildy here. Actually, Buildy's here. I'm showing you this magnificent uh, cedar trees. In front of the uh, Kino Theater, Pavetti. Right downtown. Sevastopolia. It's a magnificent building. <clears throat> Schools have an excursion here. Lots of kids. Lots of them. They just went in. Some of the mothers are still hanging out. So I got my Karen stick out. Might catch one. Might not. <clears throat> I'll take that chance. I guess it's not really fishing if you don't want to catch one. <clears throat> But you got to have this stick here, and they're attracted to it. I don't know. Oh, stop. That, that's not what I meant. Anyway. <clears throat> it's a nice, pleasant day. It's starting to warm up. Spring is springing. It's going to sprung pretty soon. Everything's just barely starting to bloom. Well, some of these things are bloom really early. Little pink flowers. Cherry blossoms will be coming soon, and apples, apples, apricots, and lilac, or not, yeah, lilac trees. There's lots of lilac trees here. So everything's white and purple. It's nice. It's a very nice. Had a pretty rough bus ride here. Kind of coming at a different time. I'm always taking different times, so I can't really get the rhythms of things. And... Uh, accommodate them. Lots of MIGs in the or uh, the new the new new the new fighter jet Supoi. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not. I've only seen it spelt, and I haven't paid much attention. That's the sound of state sovereignty. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Just want to go it over now. Yeah, that bus was jam-packed. And uh, Russian culture is pretty different. It's, it's, it's strikingly different than uh, English culture. I grew up in a very English culture. My grandfather on my dad's side was uh, English. His wife was Irish, so she was. And my grandma was Dutch. And my mom was totally Scottish. So I'm one-eighth English. <laughs> But in America, you grow up in an English society, basically Anglo culture. If someone is untoward to us and rude, especially a stranger, then one puts on a pleasant face and tries to de-escalate things. And now, 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 you know, be polite and be nice. Uh, that doesn't go over very good here. They have something called the second happiness. I don't really quite understand it. It's where people, including perfect strangers, can just unload on you, and, you know, over over nothing, just because they feel like it. And that's acceptable behavior, especially for older people. And if you're closely related to them or close friends, you're expected to, uh, I guess, engage and unload back. Because if you're polite and you smile sweetly and you try to make things pleasant and calm them down. Oh, brother, they don't like that one bit. They think you're being uh, superior. That's the way they see it. They think that you're being uh, sneaky and disingenuous. When in reality, it's a social thing. Everyone tries to make things pleasant in, 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 in public life. Uh, they, don't, they don't have that here. I had some old woman... That bus is so crowded I couldn't move all jammed up in there and she wanted by me and she stands there and glares at me and said uh, People went through. Why are you standing in the way? People went through. I, I can't move. <laughs> I have to be somewhere. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to stuff like that. It's just, <laughs> you don't need my ghoul. I can't move. I, you don't need my ghoul. <laughs> People went through. Move. Get out of my way. And that's a lot. That doesn't mean she's a really bad person or she's rude. That's People are really blunt around here. And they do have that thing. I mean, it just 
she wanted to and I was in her way and she focused on that and let me have it. And that's acceptable and you're not supposed to get, you know, hung up on that. And you certainly aren't supposed to be calm and smile at them. Oh, brother, that really sets them off. I mean, that's been my experience. It's, uh, I know regions and cities are different. They all have a different vibe to them. This is the, uh, the Forbidden City up until not too long ago. I think 97, you had to have special permission to be here. Military city. Yeah, the Russian military city that wasn't opened up till 97, and yet Ukraine claims it's theirs. My precious. Well, that's all over now. It doesn't pay to fight reality. And there is such a thing as historical reality as well. It can be changed to great effort, but usually changes right back. Those people in Donbass, they were Russians, and that was given to the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. And uh, they had a forced Ukrainianization program. You don't get to hear about that. You always, always hear about this mysterious Russianization uh, phenomenon. People were somehow Russianized. No, they had a forced Ukrainianization program. They forbid the Russian language to be spoken. They tried to make them go to Ukrainian culture classes and be Ukrainians. I don't remember how long that went on. I think it was through at least one five-year plan, maybe a couple, and then it was abandoned. It didn't work. You think it worked? This is back in the 30s. These people are Russians. Couldn't change them. Anyway, I haven't even looked at the news today. Didn't have time. I got more articles to write. Trying to keep the videos out. I got a deal with Patreon. I got to get that up. I don't have much more to go. It's it's it's, it's a totally different system uh, than uh, YouTube and Rumble, and you get paid. Yeah, in theory, I get some followers. I'm going to put. Uh, oh, I, I could. I could use some suggestions. Uh, I'm putting. I think they have you put three tiers. I think I got three, three or four, and uh, the lowest one's five bucks. Five bucks a month. I could do one buck a month, but I don't know how how hard is it to come up with five bucks in a month? And uh, you know, I'm still going to be putting out free material in other places. So I don't know. I got a good audience of really good people. I get some subscribers. I'll get steady income coming into my American bank account, which I might have access to someday. <laughs> if not, like I said, I got a plan. But I got to get the, the numbers up first. <laughs> and I'm going to work on the GoFundMe or uh, Donately. I don't know. I might do a GoFundMe too. I'm looking at it. I don't see any obstacles to it. It looks like my plan will work. I, know, I, got, I just need to get onto it. Got to do a lot of work. I put some links on my last uh, video, or maybe the one before last. I think there's the one about the Nazis. Can I say that? <laughs> the baddies. Uh, there was a link that had a lot of information about the... Uh, funding for the PR campaign that you're witnessing. This is like the the CV-19 uh, campaign. You just see it everywhere. These little blue and yellow flags. And I support Ukraine. And, and all the news stories that are just ridiculous on their face. The ghost of Kiev. And those plucky little 13 on that island. Uh, yeah, it's all bullshit. <laughs> Every bit of it. And yet a lot of people buy it. Why is that? Uh, I'll link to an article I just uh, wrote. Well, it's in UncleBuildy.com as well. I want to link to, uh, it's going to be distributed uh, a little bigger than that on another site that's not mine. And uh, I get the link to that. I'll share it as well. People you can support uh, or just, you know, share. But it's, it's the American upbringing with television that programs you. Now, that sounds crazy. I mean, well, some guy commented on, uh, 
on my Tied to the Whipping Post video. Well, the crazy crane jumped the tracks. I don't know exactly what he meant by that. It doesn't look very good, though. I mean, somebody's describing what they're going through, and it's really rough, and they're, they're muddling through it. Maybe they need, it helps them to talk about it, and maybe people can learn from it. And uh, the response is, uh, Oh, the crazy train jumped the tracks. Oh, yeah, you must be a real winner. Maybe I took it wrong. If so, then forgive me. But frankly, people with no compassion, a man with no compassion and no uh, empathy for other people, he isn't much of a man, really. I mean, that's my two bits, if, if you're still here. But if I took it wrong, well, write me a little note. I'll, I'll apologize in public. I got a pretty good group of people don't have many trolls, but they, they exist. I know how to deal with them. I've been doing this a long time, and I've been around some of the best. I had one guy threaten my kids in one of my videos. Really, seriously. I found out who he is. <laughs> I'm not all that tech savvy, but most of these people that do shit like that, they're really stupid. They're emotionally undeveloped people, and, and they make mistakes. They don't think of everything, and they just get carried away. Yeah, I was panning the camera around a little bit in my, in my, uh, I was sitting on the couch making a video, and, uh, you can see my daughter in a mirror briefly, and she's, like, adjusting her uniform, getting ready to go to school. Somebody commented, he, he put the time period that she's in there and says, Oh my goodness, did she just fall off the balcony? Why would you say something like that? Because I looked at the video, and there's no view of a balcony. And there's no, she didn't fall, the camera pans over past her briefly in the mirror, and she's adjusted in her uniform, then it pans away. Did she just fall off the balcony? That's a threat. That's, that's putting an idea of something could happen to your daughter, and I know you have a balcony. Somebody that knows Russian buildings mostly have balconies, mine doesn't. Mine's been modified, I don't have a balcony. But anyway, he's planting a little seed like a like a soured old woman a little effeminate threat and uh I, I responded to it and then i found out who he was i did a little digging i found his photograph i found out who he was he's in northeast i don't remember his washington oregon that's all the same to me antifa country and he's into you know trading stocks and all that a little pencil neck geek so I took his, uh, I, I, I cropped his face out of one of his photos and I posted in one of his other sites under Uncle Bildy so he'd, he'd know it. And then uh, immediately after that, he put another post in. Well, you can, you can delete that post if you want. No, I'm going to pen it because I want people to see what people like you are like. <laughs> that stuff doesn't bother me. I believe in God. Yeah, the crazy train jumped the tracks, didn't it? People view faith as a weakness. Holy crap, how could you possibly be that wrong? Why are you just laugh at these people? Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, I got off on a rabbit trail. Or some kind of trail. I gotta kill an hour while the kid watches a movie. I hope it's not a Disney movie. Well, let's walk around and look here. Let's, let's look around. The Karens seem to have dispersed. Well, they didn't attack me, so maybe they weren't Karens. I shouldn't be so judgy. Why are you going? Why are you filming? Why are you filming at school? Yeah, this is, uh, I guess this is like being in, uh, around the Naval Academy, wherever that is in the U.S. Where is the Naval Academy? Baltimore. This is, this is the Black Sea Fleet headquarters. This is a beautiful place uh, in springtime. These are roses, by the way. It's not the season, but when it is the season, it's color and smell. It's a beautiful tame. There's a nice little uh, Sailor Boy statue. I have trouble uh, panning this <laughs> when I can't see it. And the lighting's horrible.
Well, the soldiers and sailors statues are here because this is the uh, Kino Theater Pabetti. Cinema Theater uh, Victory. Pabetti is Victory. They got a nice little uh, statue over here I'll go to. And these magnificent cedar trees. They're huge. Nice canopy. Yeah, everything's all about uh, Pobidi. Victory in World War II. This is a hero city. You don't have any hero cities in America, do you? It's never had one attacked. This city was under siege by the Nazis. Uh, I think it was 18 months. I always forget. I think it was 18 months they expected it to fall uh, immediately and it didn't. It held out for 18 months. A lot of damage. A lot of carnage. Well, they finally got it, but they didn't keep it very long. Soviets took it back. I don't know how long it was under Nazi control. I don't think it was... Uh, I'd have to look it up. Or you can look it up. You can use Google just as well as I can. Sometimes I forget things. <laughs> if you're interested. I think it's a couple of years. They didn't do much here. They controlled Simferopol and built that train station. I think I showed you that. It's magnificent. Germans do good work. They got a lot of things right. That's a joke. Come on. Nice area. It's nice areas all over this city. This is a beautiful city. It's fantastic, especially in spring. <laughs> I keep I keep thinking like I used to, like I've been conditioned to think. Uh, because I used to have to leave when I ran out of money, and now I can't. <laughs> says, Gee, I hope I can still be here when everything's beautiful and warm and blooming. Well, yeah, I'm going to be here. And I'll still be able to enjoy it. It's springtime in Sevastopol. If you're gonna be poor, this is a good place to do it. Now I'll find something. Something to come together. <clears throat> I need to quit talking about that. It seem like I'm whining, because I'm not. I'm fine. And thank you for your concern. <laughs> Thank you for your concerns. I haven't even looked at all the uh, comments yet. I just saw the, the first few this morning when I had to run. Saw the one about the crazy train jumping the track. Well, I guess we need to pray for that guy. He's a lot worse shape than I am. If he meant by that comment what I think. Or he might have just been thinking he's being snarky. I don't know. Please clarify. Yeah. If you're listening. Yeah, this is a good place to vacation. If you got money to do vacations. You have to speak a little Russian though. It's really hard to get around if you don't. It's not difficult to learn a few phrases. And how to read. You need to learn how to read. So you can see the signs and see what you're doing. <coughs> or you can just come here and uh, have me give you a tour. I don't even know if they have flights from the U.S. to Russia anymore. Probably not. You probably have to go to someplace else. I, I recommend Dubai. It's much better than Istanbul. Last time I flew through Istanbul, I got shut down by the U.S. government worse than I get when I go to the U.S. State Department's there big time. Homeland Security, all these guys, they're in Istanbul. If you're flying out of there to America, well, they took me back to the room and asked me all kinds of impertinent questions. So, what's your business in Turkey? Where did you come from? Why were you there? Well, wait a minute. You said that you were here, you know, doing this, uh, looking for something to investigate, fishing expedition. That is so bad. 
They, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. It should be illegal. Just stop random people and ask them all kinds of stupid, contradictory questions to see if they can trip them up and find something to investigate. And these people are usually idiots to begin with, and they don't even understand what they're doing. It's a it's a template that they go by. I, I, I first encountered that in uh, Iraq. I'm uh, moving uh, third country nationals around in cranes. We had uh, riggers from India and Sri Lanka and lots of other places. And I had Iraqi crane operators. And uh, I'd escort their crews around and act as a liaison between them and the military or whatever company the, the, uh, was the client for a job. And I go through these checkpoints, and then it started getting weird, man. They wave the crane through, they wave the Iraqis through, and I, I get up there, and they'd interrogate me, because I could be a potential terrorist. It's crazy, crazy land. Some soldiers have told me that too. They want you to focus on, on construction workers that are there. <laughs> Equal opportunity, I guess. Shake down. I don't know. I think they were training them, but. Uh, I pull up there and they go through this routine. It's like, so, what's your business here? Where are you going to? Where, where do you? Where are you coming from? Well, why did you go this way? If you're coming from there, why are you going? You know, they start doing all that stuff. And uh, the first time I was rather taken aback, and I was like, what? why would you ask a question? Well, oh, it looks like you're getting agitated. Why are you getting agitated? Yeah, that's the next stage. They they want to agitate you ask you stupid impertinent questions and have a weird attitude and then when you raise your voice a little bit or you start getting high pitch oh you're agitated that's proof of something i need to little dig a little closer oh, yeah, step out of the car put your hands behind the back yeah it's that bad and after the first time i thought about it for a while oh, this is going to happen again i can tell and the next time my suspicions were confirmed uh, they went through the same template so where are you going to where you, where, where you come from? Well, why are you going this way? It looks to me like you wouldn't be going this way. How can, you know, what's your schedule? What are you doing? Well, you're getting agitated. I made it a point to keep an even tone. I talked actually very even, didn't raise my voice, didn't raise my pitch. I was sweet as butter. Smooth as butter. Some butter sweet. Sweet as sugar and smooth as butter. I was nice as pie. And he still went to the next phase. He still went there. He still said, well, you sound like you're getting agitated. Why are you getting agitated? And uh, I was ready. I said, uh, oh, I'm not agitated at all, but that's real sweet of you to ask. <laughs> the guy cracked up. He couldn't help it. He, he put his face up and he, he leaned way in. He says, they're watching me. I got to do this. I'm sorry. That's pretty sad. Things that they make people do. Make them do inhuman things. Make them do illogical, stupid things. Because it's procedure. You're dehumanizing people on both sides of the stick. On both sides of the engagement. And I use that every time then after that. When I, I get in one of these traps where they start doing that shit. And they'd always go to, well, you sound like you're getting agitated. i say, oh, I'm not agitated. That's real sweet of you to ask about, about that, though, darling. <laughs> and you do it with good humor, and they don't take offense. And every one of them laughed in varying degrees. Some of them cracked completely up. You know, they needed that. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, I knew this is going to America. It always is tested. It was tested in Iraq, and it went straight to America. That's what the cops do to people now. They look for something to investigate. They look for ways to escalate. That's how they're trained. Are they in your best interest? Are they really fighting crime? It's all gonna be used against you. Especially when the Nazis take over. Yeah, I gotta do some more digging on that. We know these networks exist. What are they gonna do? How are they gonna act if Trump gets reelected? How are they gonna act when they're completely kicked out of Ukraine and closed off from it and, and just quenched? And they will be. Now, what are they gonna do? They're very low register, emotionally undeveloped and intellectually undeveloped people. They're stupid. They're stupid, uber-violent people. They worship the state, their state, that they're trying to build. They're pretty predictable. They can't do anything outside of a very narrow track because of their ideology. 
they're easy to predict. And if you know in advance that they're there and what they're planning, you can figure out what they're going to do. You can be ready, Freddy. Uh, anybody that's got some sort of community uh, organization skills or security skills, you need to, and you have a network, you need to talk to people about this. They need to be ready for it. Oh, they, you know, some of your network might be Nazis. I don't know. Not looking for boogeymen, but uh, this thing exists. It'll be different in American culture than it is here. But it'll still be there. Hopefully it'll be a pathetic failure. Points move with me. <coughs> I don't think I'm going back. Doesn't look like it. But who knows? Who knows, who, who knows what things will be like in July? I'll be legally able to in July. Let's see what happens with the tax thing. I need to go well when I when I take my daughter back home. I need to talk about. Uh, I I know somebody that can uh, maybe help me about what I should do about that letter I got taxied me for money I never made. <laughs> Already convicted. I don't have anything to pay it with either. And I know this is Sevastopol. I'll go in there because. You know, my Russian is very bad. They, they won't have patience, won't want to deal with me. They just want to kick me out. And then jack me up for not going. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I suppose if I had the money, I'd just pay it. But then that would give me another check mark on my residence visa. And it doesn't really belong there as I didn't make any money to pay taxes on. It's not fair. Well, sometimes you just got to roll with it. Anyway. See what happens today. If it's interesting, I'll get back to you on it. never see anybody on these balconies I mean they're residences they used to have residences above the businesses in downtown America even the little small towns it's only my town was set up nobody lives upstairs anymore they have the technology you could fix the places up where they would be fairly energy efficient nobody does it they just let them rot have a business downstairs and live upstairs People did that for centuries in Europe. They started out doing it in America, but then you got your bureaucracy and your zoning laws. Your banks and construction companies wanted to dictate that everything spread out. How the roads were built, everything was affected by maximizing profits for the people that had political power and the corporations. That's why your cities are organized the way they are. And now it's a problem because you have to use a car to go everywhere. Like it's your fault. You have to have a great reset. Really? You guys organized this stuff. You guys interfered with the organic growth of communities with all your stupid regulations and your greed. And now, now, all the things are inefficient. Yeah, no kidding. The town I was raised in when I was a kid, you could walk downtown and get anything you needed. You could walk there from your house. Some people, there were some people still around, older people that didn't even have cars, didn't need them. A lot of the merchants still lived upstairs over their, over their stores. It was nice. It's all gone now. They've ruined it, and they've ruined it through regulation and uh, corporate malfeasance interference and everything and now they got the great uh agendas all the all the un agendas those are from ngos it's not the original un charter but you hear russia talking about the un they're just talking about an organization to mitigate uh strife and possible wars between nations all these agendas they've already unplugged those here they put it in their constitution that they're not answerable to any law that's not made in Russia. No international laws as precedent in what you do with your own territory. Well, they do in the U.S., though. They send people out even on a local level to get <coughs> their guys to advocate for them. 
and it's taking place. It's going into effect. I was up in North Dakota, they were plowing up all the, all the back roads, all the country roads. If well, you want to live out in the middle of nowhere, I guess you're going to have to find some way to get in and out of town. It's not the state's responsibility to maintain, maintain a road. They didn't just leave them and quit maintaining them, they actually spent money to plow them up. So now you got dirt tracks going out, out to the farms. Most of those farmers are filthy rich anyway, because they're uh, sugar beet, Monsanto sugar beet growers. Then a lot of them don't do anything but get checks from Monsanto. Monsanto sends hirelings out there to do everything. They still got the farmhouse granddad built. Make a big elaborate party house with a giant deck and a pool and they go out there and party and stuff. Well, now they got to have a real expensive four-wheel drive to get out there if, if uh, the ground's soft. But they're not encouraging small farms at all just big giant corporate farms they don't want regular people out there at all here they're doing the opposite when you drive down the interstate you see they got sound barriers all the way down it there's nothing there there's nothing to barrier the sound from and there's crossings over the interstate people can walk and cross the interstate safely there's no village there there's bus stops, but there's nothing there. They're expecting it to be something there. They're gonna put little villages everywhere. Small holdings, small farms, small agricultural communities where people have jobs, they produce food, no, uh, what do they call it, monoculture. You have a variety of things that complement one another. It's a beautiful thing. They already got a lot of them. You could establish a dacha community to do that. A bunch of people can get together and get some land. You can even get a grant for it. I like the way they do things here. You tried to do that in the U.S., all the corporations and all the food chains and all the mindless bureaucrats would do everything they could to stop you. Here they encourage it. They actually give land away to the citizens. It might not be in a very convenient place, but still, the principle is there. <clears throat> I think it goes by each member of the family. So many hectares. It's usually in the east, though. I'd love to live out there. My wife sure wouldn't. She grew up on a collective. She associates her real life with uh, poverty and drunkenness and dirtiness and stupidity and not having really nice clothes. Well, life here's pretty good. If you even got a little money. You can go to the ballet, the theater, the opera. Just hang out at the park. Or in front of the uh, Pabitti Kino Theater. Oh, I got a lot more time to go. Well, I'm not going to make a long one because it takes too long to download them or upload them. Upload them. That's what I'm doing. Uploading. I misspeak a lot. <gasps> I got a lot going on. I'm going to let you go now. On about your business. Well, I hope it's been pleasant and you learned a thing or two. Or you uh, got something out of it. Uncle Bildy signing out.